Howdy y'all, my name is Nick, aka Neshi, and this is my second place Crystal Beast deck. If you don't know, my channel is all about crystal content. I try to break the deck, I compete with it in different tournaments, and I have an extensive Crystal Beast guide series called Crystal Coaching on my channel. Before I get into the deck list, I just want to explain, don't try and neck deck this if you don't understand at why all the cards are in here. I'd encourage you to watch this video before you try this deck out yourself. I don't personally like deck profiles where it shows the entire deck list all in one go because it's just a lot of information at once. So I'd like to go along card for card, why each of them are at the number that they're at, why I play them in general, and even the side deck, why I chose to play those certain cards. First of all, shout out to Ryan Levine from Duelist Academy for working on this deck with me. And shout outs to Duelist Academy for hosting the tournament. Let's get into this. So with this particular deck, I'm playing Crystal Beast with Mech Knights. The synergy with that in particular is that Sapphire Pegasus and the Crystal Beast in general set up columns very nicely for the Mech Knights. And the Crystal Beast just put up enough pressure with cards like Crystal Bond and Crystal Promise and even Crystal Conclave to just make the opponent want to activate their effects before you want to start summoning the Mech Knights. So for the Crystal Beast lineup, I'm playing three Sapphire Pegasus and one Ruby. I did have a Cobalt Eagle earlier, but I didn't want to brick on that. But it is worth it playing the Cobalt Eagle sometimes, not only as a way to search another name off of Crystal Bond in case you draw the Ruby, but it's also cool if you normal summon the Pegasus, you can put Eagle in your back row and Crystal Promise it out if your opponent has there can be only one up, so now you, you have enough to overlay into Tornado Dragon without having to use another Pegasus. But that's the Crystal Beast lineup with our three bond and three bridge so we have nine ways to reach sapphire pegasus which is obviously the main guy of the whole thing he's running the show right and then to go along with that we have three crystal promise that's just another extender a way to keep putting on pressure so that the crystal beasts have more power and then the one searchable crystal conclave just as a way to control the game after you've already set up your, you broke your opponent's board, you set up your opponent's board because maybe you couldn't OTK. So it's just a nice searchable card. Oh, people don't expect it at all. It puts Pegasus back in your hand. For the Mech Knight lineup, we're running triple blue sky, triple purple, pretty standard. They're just the best ones. They each plus one basically. One indigo and then one yellow. You can run the one red, I did miss it once in the tournament, but it didn't really matter in the end, I still won that game. But you can run the red if you really want to as another name. And you could run a second indigo, we're not running World Legacy Secrets, so it might not be worth it. I'd much rather run the red if you're going to run another Mech Knight. Pankertops, overperformed. Amazing card, I shouldn't even have to explain this. Nibiru, it's pretty awesome in this format right now especially combo decks, Dragon Link doesn't put up a negate before the fifth summon, so you're kind of able to slow them down with Nibiru. It doesn't end their turn, but it's just a nice way to slow them down, make sure they don't end on their optimal board. Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. You might notice how many bricks we have in this deck. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. And then maybe if we're counting these as bricks, but they're not really bricks. So this is just put back the bricks turbo. 3 Phantasme. It doesn't conflict with the Pankertops because your opponent will still end on more monsters than you, which is the condition for Pankertops. It doesn't conflict with Gamma either because you just Gamma first before you throw out the Thanos. Sometimes you will draw into the Gamma off of the Thanos, but it's it's pretty, you know, that's just unlucky. <laughs> we have 3 Ash Blossom, just very versatile, can really hit any matchup. 3 Gamma, the strongest hand trap right now, for sure. And then three Bricky cards, because we are running Dragoon. He's just the most powerful boss monster of the format. And why wouldn't any deck run Dragoon? You know, this, that's the boss monster, monster Crystal Beast wish they had. For the extra, we're on two Dragoon and two Verte. This is kind of weird, right? This is for one reason in particular. I've gotten Silver Rocketed a couple times. I didn't appreciate that. I didn't appreciate my one Dragoon getting ripped or the one Verte Anaconda getting ripped from my extra deck, and then that's just a lot of power going down for the deck. 
So I decided to run two mainly because I had the space for it and because of that. And you know, if my opponent has Lithosagem, then that's another way, but <laughs> there's really just no point in not running two if people are going to Silver Rocket me. I know it doesn't happen enough, but it can happen. One Tornado Dragon, one Abyss Dweller, Utopia the Lightning. This is our rank four package that I opted for. It's This is all you really need. All of this came up pretty decently. I never went into this because this is mostly good against Sky Strikers. You know, a little bit of a slower control deck. Uh, I imagine it'd be good against Eldritch, but I haven't gotten into it uh, against Eldritch yet. It's pretty much just against Sky Striker. So this is very cuttable if you just want to run a ding for the rank 8. But when Zenith comes out, you already know. One IP Mascarena for Phoenix and Unicorn, including Access Code Talker, just as our Link monsters. Access Code is just good alternative win condition from Dragoon. And then the two Nightmares, very versatile. IP is just a good way to control the game, IP Unicorn. But the extra deck, I probably wouldn't change anything. Uh, we'd really have to just wait till Dragoon comes out. There's not really much... We, <laughs> My bad. We'd have to wait till Zenith comes out. There's not really much we can change right now. The artifact package was awesome. Lancia is great against Dino and a couple other decks right now. Mostly for Dino, though. Scythe, it doesn't need an explanation. For back row hate, we're on triple cosmic cyclone, one lightning storm, and one red reboot. I didn't get to reboot anyone, but I did side it in. It's just a very good card. Triple Tactics Talent is op I'm actually opting for the side deck this time. Not main decking this card because it's a hand rip format, right? They're just going to rip that Tactics Talent right out of your hand. But it's a good card if you really need to run those extra cards, or if some of your hand traps don't really do anything going second against maybe a Shadal deck, you know? Nibiru won't be, wouldn't be very good but the talents would be. So that's the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at how Crystal Beast can compete in the 2020 metagame. If you really liked this video, subscribe, like, comment, and check out my other videos on my channel. Just scroll right through them and see what you like. But I'll see you guys in the next one. I would argue he's advanced Crystal Beast more than anyone else has ever done in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!